But now I'd like to discuss with you a promised generalization of a Taylor series. And as a motivation, let's consider a simple problem. Suppose we have a function, which is, say, analytic in the entire complex plane, with the only exception of probably point z2. And we'd like to make a power expansion centered, say, at point z1. Then, as you remember, a Taylor expansion will have a finite radius of convergence um, restricted by this point z2. So the radius of convergence will be the modulus of z2 minus z1, because the 2 is a closer singularity to point z1. And we draw the following convergence disk. But what if we want to build a series which will be convergent, say, at point x, which lies outside this disk? Then obviously the Taylor series is not an option here. So the question is, can we devise some kind of power series which will be convergent even at point x beyond the radius of convergence of the corresponding Taylor series? And the answer is yes, we can, but at a price of incorporating negative powers in our expansion. And now let's be more precise and slightly more general. Suppose we have two concentric circles, C prime and C, and C prime is inside C, centered at point A, and the function f of z, which is analytic on these circles and between them. Now we have a plane and doubly connected region, and as you remember, we can write down the generalized Cauchy integral formula. And it is given by the difference of two integrals. The first integral, the typical Cauchy type integral, but taking along the outer circle, f of z minus z minus a minus h dz. And the second integral is the same thing, but taking along the inner circle. Now the idea is to expand both of these integrals into powers of h. Well, the first integral is pretty transparent. Point a plus h is positioned inside a big circle, and we simply step by step repeat the procedure from the first video, reconstructing the convergent Taylor series in powers of h. So let's write it down as a n times h to the power of n, where n is changing from 0 to plus infinity. And let's rewrite here the expression for a n coefficients, which are now familiar for you from the previous video, f of z over z minus a to the power of n plus 1 dz. Now pay attention that I don't reduce this integral into a nice expression y and the derivative of the function. And there is a good reason for this, and I'll explain it to you in a couple of minutes. Now the second integral. Actually, it is expanded in quite a similar manner, but with a small difference. The point here is that the modulus of z minus a is less than the modulus of h, because h lies outside this small circle. So what we do here, we factor out minus h from the denominator and obtain 1 minus z minus a over h. And now the modulus of z minus a over h is always smaller than 1. And we turn this fraction into a convergent geometric series. So let's do this. What we obtain is plus 1 over 2 pi i h, the contour integral, taking of an infinite sum f of z times z minus a over h to the power of n dz. And now we change the integration summation sign, and as you clearly see, we obtain the expansion in negative powers of h. And of course, this procedure, the interchanging of integration summation sign, can only be justified if the corresponding series is convergent. But using the same kind of arguments as in the previous video, we can easily write down the remainder term and indeed prove the convergence of the series. And you may consider it as a small home exercise, so do it. So in the end, we obtain the convergent power series, negative powers of h. And the corresponding expression for the coefficient is as follows. f of z times z minus a to the power n minus 1 dz. 
And now this full expansion in positive and negative powers of h is called a Laurent expansion of the function in an analyst centered at point a. And now some small definitions. The part with positive powers of h is called the regular part of the Laurent expansion, while the part with negative powers of h is called the principal part of the Laurent expansion. And now let's return for a second to the Taylor part of the, our Laurent expansion. As I pointed out earlier, I didn't express the corresponding uh, contour integrals via the nth derivative. Now, why was that? Well, that's because Laurent series precisely deals with cases where the function is not differentiable at point A. So these contour integrals are simply not equal to the corresponding derivatives. That was the reason. That's why we needed a Laurent expansion rather than Taylor expansion. So don't make this mistake. Now let's consider some small example. Say we have a function f of z equals e to the power of x over 2 z minus 1 over z. It's a rather nice looking function, which is analytic in the entire complex plane with the exception of the point z equals 0. And this way we'll build a Laurent expansion of this function centered at, at the origin. So we employ our formulas for coefficient a n and b n. Now you may ask a question, what would be the correct choice of the radius of the circle when we integrate? But as you recall, the principal consequence of Cauchy integral theorem is that you can make any deformation of the contour as long as this deformation doesn't touch the singularity of your function. So you may choose the radius of the contour at your convenience. And probably one of the most suitable choices would be a unit circle. So it is parameterized as e to i phi, where phi changes, say, from minus pi to pi. This way dz over z is simply i d phi. And now our coefficient a n. 1 over 2 pi i, the integral from minus pi to pi. Now we plug in this e to i phi in the e exponent of this exponential. And we see that we have a combination e to i phi minus e to minus i phi, which is nothing but a sign. So let's use it. And we obtain e to the power of i x sine phi minus i n phi i d phi. Now, using Euler's identity, we may split this exponential into cosine and sine part, and the sine part will lead to a vanishing integral due to the fact that the corresponding function is odd. So, we are left with the integral of 1 over 2 pi from negative pi to pi of cosine of x sine phi minus n phi d phi. And a learned listener will immediately recognize here the integral representation of a Bessel function, jn of x. Now coefficients bn are computed in quite a similar way. Substituting our change, we obtain a very similar expression, e to ix sine phi plus i n phi i d phi. And quite surprisingly, this integral can be reduced to the previous integral by a simple change phi to pi minus phi. And once we use the periodicity of the integral, we immediately obtain that it's equal to negative 1 to the power of n times a n. And this way we obtain the full run expansion for our function. So it's the sum from 0 to plus infinity of j n of x times z to the power of n plus the sum over n from 1 to plus infinity, negative 1 to the power of n, j n of x, times z to the power of negative n. And that's it. That completes our first discussion of the Laurent series. And in our next video, we'll discuss two methods of Laurent expansion, which help us to avoid uh, the taking of these circular integrals. So stay tuned.